Hi students, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to week three. Um, I am putting this video up a little early. Uh, I know some of you may have some Labor Day plans and want to get a head start on your schoolwork this week. So I want to review a couple things. Uh, some of you, as I've been grading, you're confused why you're getting zeros. Uh, I want to reiterate this. I said this several times the very first week, um, but I feel like I need to clarify it again. If you go, I'm going to use this course for an example. If you go uh, to your Blackboard page and you are looking at the course materials, weekly assignments, and lectures, this is what you are going to follow for your homework assignments. Um, do not go by the Blackboard calendar. If you go by the Blackboard calendar, you're going to get confused because your discussion boards are two-part uh, homework assignments. You have initial posts that are due on Wednesday and you have responses that are due on Sunday. So I have to make the due date for those on a Sunday. Um, because of that, uh, a lot of times that calendar will show that the whole thing is due Sunday and then you're confused why I'm putting a zero in on Thursday morning when you didn't complete the initial post on Wednesday. So again, I want to reiterate this. I cannot stress it enough. These are the dates that you are going to be abiding by. Um, this week you are turning in, uh, you should have submitted your outline. Uh, if not already, it is due tomorrow at 1159 PM. And I've already started grading the people that turn theirs in early. So I want to go over a few things, um, just to kind of help you have a better understanding. I'm seeing kind of the same consistent mistakes being made. And so I want to reiterate uh, just a few keynotes uh, in these outlines. So first of all, uh, when we look at an outline, one of the things that I want you to realize, uh, first of all, in this, in this particular outline, I have three paragraphs uh, in the body paragraph section, but you might have four, you might have five paragraphs, and that is okay. Um, you just need to ensure that you include a topic sentence to show me that that's what you're going to do. The next thing that I want to reiterate, guys, the thesis statement what I want you to remember, there's a huge difference between an opening statement and a thesis statement. Your hook or your opening sentence, uh, that's what's going to draw your reader in. That's where you're going to include some of these introductory ideas or statements. Uh, for some of you, that might look like a direct quote, okay? Like in the example of my brother-in-law's eulogy that I showed you. Uh, for others, that may uh, just be a funny joke or a funny pun. If the person who's sharing this eulogy is your spouse, it might be a funny little story that draws the audience in uh, from your spouse's perspective. Whatever that may be, that is completely different from the thesis statement. The thesis statement is the main message, the main purpose, the main idea that you want your audience to walk away with. So uh, for example, when they are done hearing the eulogy, your thesis statement is going to be the most important thing they remember when they leave that funeral. Um, I want to, uh, I actually am doing this exercise with you guys uh, as you're going. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've ever created uh, the content that I'm doing this semester. So I think it's beneficial uh, that I go along and do it with you to see uh, where I need to work out some kinks in my teaching and in my lectures. So here's uh, my eulogy outline example. So for the hook or opening sentence, uh, I used a direct quote, like this was something that I said to somebody. I guess when it all comes down to it, I want to be remembered as the person who impacted as many people as possible. I want to be the person who uses my time well and uses it for the good of others. And then my thesis statement, which again, the main message, the main idea that the audience is walking away with. When I think about what Logan shared with me on her 30th birthday, I realized that she accomplished exactly what she was, I forgot some words here, what she was working towards. She was a woman deeply committed to her faith. 
She loved and cared for every person she met. And she was intentional with every platform, material, item, and circumstance she was given. Guys, this is the nutshell um, of what this eulogy is going to be about. Now, if I would have included a couple more ideas or concepts in that, then I would have needed to add a couple body paragraphs. Uh, but for the sake of example, I want to show you what this breakdown looks like. So let's look at the first part of this thesis, thesis statement. She was a woman deeply committed to her faith, okay? Now, if we go here for topic sentence one, while many people considered Logan a good person, those who knew her best knew of her intimate relationship with her faith, all right? Uh, guys, the thing about topic sentences, topic sentences are not examples, I'm going to repeat that one more time. Topic sentences are not examples. A lot of you, when you're using a topic sentence in your outline, you're jumping straight to an example sentence. The topic sentence, think about it as a mini version of the thesis statement in that paragraph. It's the main idea of the paragraph. So if you start with an example, you're going to leave your audience wondering, well, what was that paragraph really about? What is this concept really about? Your topic sentence, uh, it should embody the entirety of that paragraph. So uh, for example, in my topic sentence, uh, those who knew her best knew of an intimate relationship with her faith. It's very evident that this entire paragraph is going to talk about my faith, okay? I could play that out uh, in multiple different examples. And that's what you want to do. That's what builds a good, strong paragraph is, okay, is this something I can only talk about in a couple sentences? Or is this something that I can do a well-developed, full-length paragraph over? The next topic... Logan was a person who instantly loved and cared for people regardless of their differences or whether they could give her anything in return. Again, guys, this doesn't jump to, uh, let's say that I used the topic sentence and I said, Logan loved her daughter. Okay, well, then the only thing I can write about in that paragraph is that I loved my daughter. That's it. But with this topic sentence, I can talk about my family. I can talk about my students. I can talk about the people of my community. I can talk about people that are different than me, that have different belief systems and values and how I love them well. Uh, there's, there's a total different dynamic of what I am able to write about because of this topic sentence versus if I limited myself. So when you, when you guys are creating topic sentences, I want you to consider that. Consider what should I be doing differently, okay? What should I be doing differently where I can create a well-developed paragraph? And then finally, when looking at the many areas of Logan's life, including her church, her family, and her passion for education, her constant intentionality was the catalyst for change in lives, systemic issues, and injustices, okay? And what I really meant to say here uh, was and the improvement of injustices, okay? Uh, again, I have given a very broad statement here where I could talk about a hundred different things. This is going to turn into a well-developed paragraph because I have this very broad scope of what I can discuss here. You really don't want to limit yourself in your topic sentences. Your topic sentences need to give you room and space where you can really uh, unpack the idea, okay? So these are the body paragraphs. And then finally, the conclusion. Uh, guys, your conclusion needs to drive back home this idea of your thesis statement, but it needs to be in different language, okay? You don't wanna copy and paste this and then stick it right there below. Uh, think, get creative. Think of a way that you can say it uh, and say it in different words or say it with a different impact or say it with uh, a different point of view after you've gone over your examples and your, uh, your proof in your body paragraphs. Many of us will feel the deep loss of Logan, but as we look around the room and see the hundreds of people whose lives have been changed for good, it is clear that her faith, her relationship with others, and her daily commitment to be intentional with every minute of every day created a life that is worth celebrating. Again, all this does is it is mirroring, it is copying what I said right here, but it's saying it with a different, uh, just a different spin on the idea. 
Okay. Um, I hope that this was helpful. I hope it answered some questions for you. Uh, and what I really wanted it to do is kind of reiterate and go over these parts of the essay uh, because a lot of you are just really limiting yourselves in those topic sentences and you're jumping straight to examples rather than really developing a topic. Uh, as you're going over your eulogy and you're creating it, if you have already received feedback and you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out or let's set up a Zoom conference or a phone conference so that we can make sure that you have a well-developed outline and well-developed ideas uh, before we begin drafting this week.